C are actually represent mostly representative of different colors, uh, different eruptive, eruptive events. Uh, the more red brown tinged layers are actually very much uh, the volcano that these are sourced from, explosive events. So each one of those, each one of those individual layers is representative of a volcano exploding on a small or large scale. Um, if it's far away, that might just be a, a little layer that's traveled a long way. Um, it's hard to tell where the actual eruption point is from just looking from this, this sequence, but I'd say it would be uh, at least three or four kilometers away, just because the layers that we're seeing, at least the eruptive layers, which are the explosive, very volatile um, layers, are only quite thin. We've got another couple of layers, which are the darker layers that we see here. Uh, there's a combination of things going on there. Um, uh, this, this large dark layer that I see, we see right in front of us, about 15 metres up from the water surface, uh, there's two possibilities there. That it, uh, one, it could just be in amongst uh, the explosive, like really detrital debris is what we would call it. So it's, it'd be really angular class there's been a flow of lava, so lava flowing across the surface of the earth, like, like you might see in Hawaii. Um, it's a similar type of uh, uh, vol volcanic composition, but not quite the same. But it is still basaltic, which is quite similar. Which is where the red comes from in all the, the, the scoi or the explosive layers. Because they're so uh, porous, uh, there's a lot of iron in those rocks and they turn red like that because of the, the iron content within the rocks. And the darker layer here, as I was explaining, is a flow. So it's more, it's probably more a competent unit. It, it's either a flow or I'm um, sort of speculating because of the, the various edges of it, the, the upper and the lower edges are quite regular. A flow, you would usually expect the upper edge and the lower edge to be quite parallel, but we see what I call, what we call apotheses, little um, on the bottom edge and also the top edge. You see little, almost davits into into the the rock that it was it's sort of either bound by either side it's bound by, and to me that suggests that it may actually be intruded into that rock. So you've had a sequence of these. Uh, red explosive events and then as magma has come up it's found a weak plane along along the stratigraphy along the layers and it's actually intruded completely in and what what has happened so this is just one of the possibilities what has happened when it's hit a little fracture plane that's going perpendicular to the the flow it's actually sort of melted up or melted down and that's how that's why I maybe think it's 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 a sill or an intrusive event, but it could just as easily be a flow. It's hard to tell from this distance. And then down down here, this uh, sort of grey brown, uh, quite competent unit. That's definitely a sill. So that's definitely intruded, and you can sort of follow that around, and it sort of anastomoses all throughout the rocks. So is it the one with the big block or the small block? Uh, it's like on the red layer, you have like very small big blocks and you have some that are more like very light? Uh, very light, yeah. So this this competent, uh, quite angular looking rock yeah, yeah. here, you can sort of follow it through and it, it doesn't really conform 100% to one of the layers. It, it sort of does its own thing. That's because so it's, it's definitely uh, intruded okay. later. Okay. And then in addition to that, over here, uh, where the birds are, you can actually see two fault planes. So they're, they're, they're quite late in the sequence. They post-date all this other activity because they cut, cut cross. So they're formed as faults, two faults that would continue down and probably what we would call splay out, go quite horizontal. You can see the plane from this one here falling all the way up the cliff on the other side there. So that's the same fault plane and it would probably likely to extend quite a, few, uh, quite a way out to the sea as well. But you, but you can see that it's faulted and then an additional intrusive event or an additional amount of lava or magma 
has actually intruded along that fault plane. Oh uh, yeah. Because if it was just a fault plane, it would be it quite like rubbly in there still. But you can sort of see, sort of make out that at least this one to the right has been intruded by another another event. And the thing about these this type of volcano is um, it's called probably called a dome volcano um, because what happens is all, all these these multiple events sort of occur from the very uh, violent eruptive phase to a more like the flowing phase and as, as each of those progressive layers occur um, you're building up a dome basically um, unlike some of the volcanoes say in New Zealand or uh, some of the really high peaked volcanoes in America uh, say Mount St. Helens which is quite a typical volcano that are very steep and angular um, these these have a tendency to be able to the lava and the composition of these rocks allow the lava to flow more extensively whereas the volcanoes in Mount St. Helens and uh, those other areas um, I do not do not flow as, as competently so um, that's why we end up with a, a dome shape quite a, a rounded dome shape in the end of it end of the game but voila Bravo. Yeah. Bravo. <laughs> any questions <laughs> it's exciting <laughs> I was reading on uh, Doug's book that this is the highest peak in this one here yeah. Yeah. yeah 1300 something Oh, let's go. Yeah. That's phenomenal. Well, we're not saying the summit at all. So right? It's false. Sorry? It's a false summit. Ah, uh, this, this, yeah, Very definitely. So, yeah. Yeah. so how long do you think it takes like to build up, I mean, like how many, I mean, okay, I, I know it's depending on how many eruptions you have. Yeah, But yeah. like how long would you, I mean, uh, best yeah. guess. How, how long to build a mountain yeah, or like how long to build this sequence? Uh, because... Well, in a modern sense, you'd be able to go and stand at a similar volcano like this, and each eruption may occur uh, every two days. Okay. Uh, so it can take like two years, and it's uh, like it could, this. Uh, probably probably longer. Um, okay. I mean, and then you use an example like Hawaii. Um, I mean, the, all of Hawaii has been developed by lava flows or similar explosive events. Um, Bravo! And, and certain areas within um, Hawaii, like, haven't necessarily seen um, flows, volcanic flows of lava within human history, but they've, they've, they've been forming there. So, like, that's one flow, uh, and there's another flow up there. So maybe that that represents you know a couple of hundred years of human history. But either way. Like so geologically, we're talking a, a million so years to build something out of the sea floor. Yeah, because, yeah, it's like it's three kilometers deep. Yeah, something of a long time period. Yeah, it's so nice to have an expert on the world. Geology 101. <laughs> 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 <laughs>